Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. Welcome to Knife AQ. This is episode 129 of the series where I answer all your questions, whether they're sharp or dull. This week, pondering the question, how much does it matter if your knife is operatable in an ambidextrous fashion? We're also going to ask, at least I'm asking myself, why do I only have one fixed blade on this table? Truth is, I don't know why I only have one fixed blade on this table. That's just the way the questions worked out this week. Which brings me to my next point. If you're new to this series, the questions that we answer in it come from our comments section. Come through, pick out some good ones. So if you have a question and you would like it to be considered for a future episode, please just leave it down in the comments section below. First question today comes from Yeezy K. Hello, Knife Center gentlemen. Where? Well, he, he was plural, so he was including you in that, and that's where he went wrong, really. That, that was the problem. Uh, it's getting hot, and my wife and I enjoy drinking fresh coconuts. Cool. Uh, and we usually don't want to waste the meat. It's always funny to think of the coconut meat. It's a plant. Flesh is flesh. It's flesh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Uh, what fixed blade around the four, in four inch length would you recommend to help open up coconuts? Also, if there's a folder that's strong enough to handle opening coconuts up. Sure. This sounds like a lot of fun. It makes me want to just like sit on my deck and drink a coconut. <laughs> Maybe I'll go to the grocery store tonight. Anyway, actually, I'm going to start with the folders here um, because this is kind of a, an interesting question and an interesting kind of um, length limit you placed upon yourself there because when I think of like the best t actual tool for opening up coconuts, it's probably just a small machete, quite honestly. Um, like the SE Libertariat would be cool. If you're going to go folding, why not get yourself the pocket machete that is the Espada XL <laughs> from Cold Steel? Maybe a little much, I, I, I grant you. This is a bit of a joke answer. Uh, and you also may be wondering why I picked the brown version here because it's the, uh, the most coconut... Uh, themed of the, the available colors. Um, but there, there is something to the heart of me of this suggestion, and that is the triad lock, Cold Steel's uh, spin on the lock back here uh, that you know changes the geometries a bit over a standard lock back, has a stop pin and some various other things that make it stronger and longer lasting than a typical lock back. It is an incredibly strong locking mechanism full stop. And if if I were going to be doing any kind of like chopping hacking with an actual folder, this is kind of the first lock that I would look to, kind of my, my lock of choice for that specific scenario. But we do have a four inch knife that I think would work okay. It's still a bulky knife, but that is the 4Max, whether you go with the Scout versions with the uh, injection molded scales and the Aus 10 blade, or if you go for the S35 uh, VN steel version with G10 handles. They're both essentially the same in terms of this, uh, this matchup right here. I, you know, one steel or the other wouldn't sway me. Uh, it's more of a price point because this one right here is by $84, which is pretty great. Uh, and the standard one or the, uh, the flagship version, uh, is about 200. No, sorry. Ooh, I forgot how expensive it was about $425. I'd probably myself, I'd probably wind up buying this one, but You've got that triad lock for strength. You've got a stout blade. I mean, look how thick that is. It's about what, three sixteenths of an inch thick there? Roughly uh, or high ish flat grind, kind of blending the uh, slicing capabilities with the durability. But more importantly, this is a four inch blade, and you're not getting a lot of chopping and hacking power out of a four inch length without some aids. And in this case, that aid is the handle here. It's a little bit longer, and you can choke back and even hang off the end of it to get a little more length. It's not necessarily the first thing I would reach for for opening up a coconut, but it could quite honestly do the trick. And I would have faith in personally in this lock system here too. Um, if you want a fixed blade, um, I'd say that the best thing if you're on the go doing this, the folder is probably what you're gonna gonna want to do. But if you're at home doing this, I don't see any reason to limit yourself to a four inch blade for the fixed blade version. Uh, I'm going to recommend you go with something a little bit bigger, such as the White River Camp Cleaver right here. Very, very cool knife. Five and a half inch S35 VN blade, $255 right now for this Linden Micarta handled version. And especially if you throw a uh, lanyard fob on the back here so you can get your pinky around that, you can choke back a little bit on this and get some length. Actually, let's compare. <laughs> so, yeah, actually, 
round about the same amount of reach as the 4Max Scout when you choke back. Let me make sure I'm even there. Yeah, a little bit more on the on the Camp Cleaver, but yeah, you get the point. Really cool knife. Comes with a, a brown leather sheath, but again, if you're drinking coconuts on the go in a, a more civilized scenario, maybe the, the folder is the way to go. But on the subject of cleavers, which this White River is an awesome knife all around, but again, if you're at home, something as simple as the uh, this old hickory meat cleaver right here would be a lot of fun hacking into a coconut with. They're very affordable, uh, you know, like 19 bucks for this right now. The only uh, kind of downside on them is sometimes, it looks like this one's okay actually. Sometimes the edges need a little bit of work out of the box, but this is carbon steel made in America for 19 bucks. <laughs> There's still a great deal. Use the knife on the coconut and chop it all up. I'm not, I'm not even going there. <laughs> I, I see what you did there, but I'm not even going there. But I mean, that would, that would make a great little coconut processing tool because you don't have the length of a small machete, but you have the height of that blade giving you a little more weight, a little more choppy choppy. Next up, Justin asks, uh, hi DCA, love the Knife AQ series. Do you have any folder suggestions for lefties on a budget? It seems to me like the knife world keeps forgetting about us. Not me, Justin. I haven't forgotten about you. Uh, even fixed blades with sheaths that are ambidextrous are few and far between. Thanks. So yes, I've got you know a selection of knives here in front of me, but before you you you, you some ninety percent uh, on average of the population uh, that is not left-handed tunes this next section out, stick around because <laughs> there is a good reason to even if you're right-handed to having a knife that you can both carry and operate easily with your left hand. You know, for righties it would be your offhand. Um, you know, you never know especially, you know, in a, a tense scenario, an emergency scenario. Obviously, you hope they're never going to happen. For most people, they aren't ever going to happen. But in case your right hand is incapacitated for one reason or another, being able to use the hand, the knife left-handed is a big deal. Um, for those folks, uh, for if you're looking for a knife of that works well for lefties, we do have a section on our website of left-hand friendly knives. And we do call it the left-hand friendly knife because dedicated left-hand models. There are a few that make, a few companies out there that do make dedicated lefties, um, but not on all their models and not all the time either, but like Spyderco, Chris Reeve, uh, Kaiser even do make some lefties. But you don't need a dedicated left-hand model to have something very easy to use for, for a left-hander. And I'm gonna start with some kind of old time classics at this point in the lockback genre. Uh, you're talking about being on a budget. You didn't mention your exact budget, but we'll start with stuff that's pretty inexpensive. The K-Bar Dozier is a classic and hard not to recommend for the uh, budget side of things. Newly available in D2 steel. This one comes in about 37 bucks, uh, but the standard OS 8 versions come in you know, the low 20s right now. Three inch spear point blade, full size handle that you can even be even use with larger hands because of the shape. And what goes into making this ambidextrous here, first off is the lock. You know, this is a, a symmetrical lock, as I like to say, it operates the same from either side. So the locking mechani mechanism is not biased. You do have a reversible pocket clip, so either side carry can work. You do have a single sided thumb stud, however, that is set up for right handed use out of the box. This is a reversible thumb stud though. So you could flip that around. Is that gonna help you? You know, the point I made there at the beginning, if you're, you know, righty using this in your offhand and that thumb stud isn't switched around, that does make it a bit more of a problem to open one handed. And the next ones might do a little better for you there. But you know, for mid thirties for a D2 lockback strong like this, but still very lightweight, I think it's a pretty good deal. Uh, the Bird series from Spyderco, another great option. Uh, the injection molded versions of those start in the in the 30s uh, for most of them. How about the Harrier 2 right here? Something a little more premium feeling with the G10 handles, just under 52 bucks right here. 3.3 inch blade, 8CR stainless, full flat grind, four position clip so you can carry it however you like, ambidextrous locking and opening, hard to go wrong. And it, you know, it's the Spyderco design language, just on a slightly smaller scale. It's kind of, this one is the Indela, with a thumb or uh, with a finger choil there for added grip. We'll get to the Indela in a little bit. Uh, and then the other, not necessarily a classic in the super affordable genre, but an updated classic brought into 
said genre, the Buck 110 Slim Select. These are great. This one starts at, these are also like 34 bucks. Three and three quarter inch blade, 420 HC, made in America, pinned construction, reversible pocket clip, dual thumb studs, ambidextrous lock. Hard to go wrong with any of these. If these feel a little too kind of old school for you and you want, uh, you know, maybe you're a more modern enthusiast, one of the best things to happen, I think, for, for lefties in the last few years has been the proliferation of button locks across a wide, wide range of price points. Kicked off, of course, uh, most famously by the uh, Protec Malibu a couple of years ago. Many of the button locks that are out there do come with reversible pocket clips. Not all of them do. Uh, so make sure you buy carefully when you do. But three of the most popular right here do. The CJRB Pyrite topped many best of lists last year when it came out. And this one right here, Knife Center exclusive with some waved engraved, waved engraved waves on the, uh, the handle here. Just over three inch powder steel blade, RPM 9, 50 bucks. And right now at least all the $50 versions, whether stainless steel or G10, do come with a reversible pocket clip. And as you can see, very easy to operate left-handed, even though it's a right-hand biased lock. Very, very nice. That has brought that has opened up a lot of kind of left-hand friendly options on the market. I will say, however, the link that we have on our site to the left-hand friendly section typically doesn't include button locks because the criteria we use to kind of fill that page is it has to be symmetrical side to side in terms of operation. And the button lock is easy to operate, but it's not you know, a symmetrical thing. It doesn't operate the same way as it would for a right-handed user. Doesn't mean it's not left-hand friendly though. Two other very popular button locks that, that do have reversible clips, uh, the Civivi Conspirator and the Civivi Cogent. Very popular knives. We've got 14C28N steel on the Conspirator, 14C28N on the Cogent, which are very similar steels. You know, you're not gonna be able to tell too much of a difference between one or the other in use. Three and a half inch blades. Starting the uh, the Cogent, I believe, starts in the low 70s for the uh, the base models there. So creeping up a little bit in price, but still attainable. And these exclusives we have right here are upgraded even further. S35 VN steel on both of these. We've got ebony wood handles on the Cogent and black aluminum on the Conspirator. And they've both got the action you want from this sort of thing. But even though these may not quite fit the terms of, of budget at $100 and $110 respectively here, it is. it kind of goes to show that if you stretch a little bit beyond a, a budget price, you can get into some pretty premium feeling knives, pretty premium feeling materials, which again is only a good thing. Far and away though, I told you all these things to show you what I really want to show you next. And that is kind of my the thing that makes me very happy, my go-to lock recommendation for ambidextrous use is the crossbar lock. Made famous by Benchmade's axis mechanism. The patent on that has uh, run out a few years ago and now we're seeing a lot of other companies come out with their versions, including at some budget price points, which is really, really great. The reason I love it is this is a symmetrically operating knife design or knife lock design. You grab the lock bar that goes across and wedges against the tang with your fingers and close it. Works great either side. The SOG Terminus XR is uh, the oldest of these uh, budget crossbar locks on the list, which is something like four years old, four or five years old anyway. Still a great option at about 60 bucks, three inch D2 blade, three opening methods. You've got the crossbar lock, you've got the thumb studs, and you've got the flipper tab right there and a pretty full handle for such a compact design. I can fit all four of my fingers on there. And as folks know, I do have slightly larger than average hands. Works great. Reversible pocket clip, deep carry in this case. That is something to watch though. Most crossbar locking knives out there have been you know, keeping an ambidextrous clip going on. Some don't, however. So just make sure whether you're looking at these button locks or any of these crossbar locks, make sure if you are intending to carry it left-handed or on the left-hand side, make sure the clip is reversible. The Terminus XR is great. Uh, Kershaw came out with four new crossbar locking designs this year. Right now, this is at about 58 bucks, the Covalent 3.2 inch D2 blade, a little bit longer than the Terminus, a little bit slicier, full, almost a full flat grind with a thinner blade stock to start with. 
reversible tail mounted pocket clip, injection molded handles, and very good action. Two opening methods. You don't have the thumb studs here, but you do have a nice flipper and that crossbar lock too. One more option to take a look at uh, that I'm growing more and more fond of the more times I pick it up, and that's the Real Steel Sacra. Sacra? Sacra? Something like that. 7120. So creeping up a little bit. This might not be a budget pick to some, and I get that, but it feels pretty nice, pretty premium in a way. Uh, you're not getting a powder metal steel here like the uh, Civivis, Civivis we looked at, K110, which is Bowler's uh, D2. Really good stuff. 3.3 inches long, drop point, high saber grind with flat geometry, great everyday user. The handle is folded steel rather than two sides screwed together. You get a lot of stability out of something like that. Various handle onlay options are available. This is the green micarta. I happen to really like that. And even though, you know, blade length wise, we're kind of the same as this covalent, but look at the difference in handle size there. The closed position on this real steel is much more compact, which may be a plus or minus depending on how you like your knives, but this is going to be a very carryable knife platform overall. And reversible clip with the other ambidextrous controls. Very, very cool little knife. Hope that helps, my friend. Next up, we're jumping in to the segment we call Measured Once, Cut Twice. You know what we're doing over here. Uh, and this is in response to last week's episode where I was talking about the Miata principle applied to knives, which we're just going to call the Mora principle at this point, which Thomas coined as Mora over really everything. Anything. And everything. Knives that, ri that do so well, they kind of rise to becoming the default answer for a lot of things. Uh, and we'll get to some, of the, some more acronyms here in a minute. But at the risk of undermining my own point that I made last week, uh, several folks had, I thought, some pretty decent suggestions where, as an alternative, where I recommended the Sebenza. And while I still maintain that the Sebenza is often the only right answer for some questions, I'll admit that the question I picked as an illustration last week, there could be a few other alternatives. So let's, let's ask the question again. It comes from Matt Young, who says, I like knives that look good enough to carry to church, but tough and durable enough to get anything done. Job requiring me to do a lot of random things from breaking down immense amount of boxes to doing yard work to going to formal events. What would be your suggestion? I did recommend the Sebenza because it's hardworking and good looking, very refined. But what, do you, what did you folks think? Dylan Lay said, I feel like the Benchmade 940 would have been a great choice for question two. I'll give that one to you. I'll give that one to you. Uh, let's talk about that knife right here. For this, right off the bat, I would, would recommend going with the 940-1 rather than the base aluminum model. It is more expensive, coming in at $315, but there's a reason for that. The questioner, questioner mentioned yard work, and he didn't specify what that yard work was. So I had to imagine, you know, what are you going to be doing? And if it involves cutting open bags of seed or fertilizer or anything like that, the 940-1 has something that the Sebenza also has, I forgot to mention last week, an open-backed construction. So it's going to be a lot easier to keep clean than something with a more closed back. That's definitely going to be a good thing. Uh, they also, it also has a washer-based pivot, no ball bearings here, which again, if I'm shoving this blade into a bag of mulch, bag of fertilizer, what have you, I'm going to appreciate not having the, uh, the ball bearings to worry about there. It's a little easier to keep the washers clean and grit-free. Other than that, great platform here. The blade is 3.4 inches long, S90V on this more expensive version, S30V on the standard ones. Plenty of handle length there to get a full grip on the blade. Plenty strong feeling blade, maybe a little less refined. I would say definitely a little less refined feeling in terms of classiness than a Sebenza, but that is a subjective thing, of course. That's just my eye. Good option. You've got that crossbar lock too. Great ambidextrous qualities there. That is easy to use with the left hand, I promise. I just, I hate when I try to make a point and I stumble on the, the action. There's only so much I can edit. <sighs> what are you going to do? Good on you. I'm, I'm, I'm down with that suggestion in this case. Whether you think the, uh, the standard aluminum version looks classier than the carbon fiber or not, again, that's subjective. But for me, it's the, the open back construction that makes that 
a, uh, a better option. There is the G10 version as well, which is less expensive, but that's definitely less classy. I think we can all agree on that one uh, in terms of like going to church or formal meetings, formal events, I should say. Uh, next one, Cliff with an I or Cliff with a one. <laughs> Uh, says, I think a good option for the Sabenza category is the Knife Center exclusive Spyderco Indela and Packerwood and Hap 40. I could see that one too. You do lose the uh, open backed construction. This is going to be a little harder to clean out if it gets nice and muddy. But there's a certain classy elegance to this too. Maybe some people might disagree in terms of the, the blade shape here. It's definitely a little more out there than you know, most conventional blade shapes, but strong lock back. Solid feel in the hand, very durable steel, the HAP40 here, uh, which is at the core of this laminated, laminated blade, is pretty tough, holds an edge a good long while too. Uh, and this knife right now is on sale for about uh, $195 at the moment, got it at a special price. Not sure how long that is uh, going to last though, plus a four position pocket clip. That could be a good one too. And just for, good, just for kicks, I'm going to throw in one extra as a possibility. The Lion Steel SR11G, the titanium version especially. Well, the aluminum ones are fine too, but the titanium ones have a, uh, they aren't anodized bright colors or black. You got a classier look with these. 324, you got a 3.7 inch Sleipner steel blade with convex edge geometry, which is cool. Not quite open back to construction. You do have a bit of this closed off. There are some holes there to uh, lighten it up a little bit, but this is an integral titanium handle here, integrally milled. So very strong, very tough, great hardworking steel. Washers in the pivot here as well. Same thing with that Spyderco we just looked at. Might be a little too big and aggressive for the uh, formal event category, but always kind of worth thinking about when we're talking about Sabenza alts as well. How about we get to some of those acronyms? Uh, I, I did suggest or ask for your acronyms for the other things we suggested in that video. So that's gonna be our lightning round for today. Start with the Mora. Thomas was great with Mora over really everything or anything, but you guys might have even one upped them here. Mora, only right answer, which really does kind of distill like the Miata is always the right answer principle yeah, to I, the thing. I wasn't presuming that there weren't any other answers. No, I like this because it's more confrontational. It's like, no, both of them are, are quite good. Uh, but Sabenza was going to be the tough one. You guys came through. Here's my favorite one. Uh, Woodsy5326. Sabenza, or sorry, something everybody equally needs, zero availability. <laughs> that was good. That made us all chuckle here because yeah, if you go to our site right now, there's probably not any Sabenzas in stock because they get bought up so quickly still to this day. But everybody needs one. Nah, not everybody needs one. Maybe that's why there's never any. <laughs> that one made me laugh. That was my favorite there. Uh, for the Swiss Army knife, uh, Frank's Yor is my favorite one. S-A-K. I gotta take a deep breath for this one. Serves all kind of purposes in any life aspects, either indoors or outdoors or office or you name it, had to stretch a little bit for the K. Got a new longest word in the dictionary. There's no, there's no spaces in there. But, it, you know, he says uh, it had to stretch a little bit for the K, because, but, you know, it's a multi-tool, so the K is serving multiple purposes. But I like this. I'm going I'm to condense yours uh, to just serves all kinds. Swiss Army Knife's... Swiss Army Knife will serve all kinds of people because we're sack people after all. I like that. Uh, Waz83, actually a couple people had this socially acceptable knife, which kind of gets to the core of something I you know, have brought up often when talking about Swiss Army Knives. So that's fun too. Uh, William Phillips, you had a number of uh, good ones, but I'm going to share your rat and your Spyderco salt suggestions. Uh, rat, rat's already there. I'm going to tweak it a little bit and say, the rat's always there, good and reliable. Maybe reliable and always there. That's the rat. Like, that's good. This is a rat that won't leave the sinking ship. And yes, someone did actually make the, uh, I was waiting for someone to go here because rat does actually stand for something as Randall's adventure training, but that's fine. Uh, and then salt from William Phillips, salt water and Lake Taunter. I like it. Good stuff, you guys. Well done on all of them. If I didn't mention yours, it didn't mean I didn't enjoy them. Just you only have so much time in the video here. But now we come to our final question of the day, which is, of course, 
our most serious question of the day, which comes today from Matt Young. I've been looking for a knife to neuter my pet horsefly. Thoughts? Well, you get the tool that's designed for the right creature. And it would be the Spyderco small fly in this case, wouldn't it? Got that crew wear blade steel so you could go through a whole, uh, what's a, what's, I almost called them a flock of flies. I guess it'd be a swarm, wouldn't it? Spyderco small fly. See if you got anything better. That's all we've got for today, folks. Thanks for sticking around. If you've got a question and you want it answered in a future episode, to have a chat, to have a shot at that, drop it in the comments below, like we talked about earlier. And if you want to get your hands on any of these knives, maybe even a Sabenza if we have any in stock right now, check out the links in the description. Those will take you to knifecenter.com. And don't forget about our Knife Rewards program, because if you're buying one of these knives today, at least you'll get to earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, and that's Thomas behind the camera. We're signing off. See you next time.